Hi everyone, it's Goji Guy from Control All Monsters here with another Schmuck replay. This time it's Death Smiles, uh, played on Nintendo Switch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play here. So Death Smiles is uh, not my first cave clear. It's uh, my second after Mushihime Sama, but my Mushi replay got corrupted or something on the Switch, so I've got to redo that sometime. Anyways, Death Smiles is really, I think, one of the best beginner shmups out there. Even though its controls are a little complicated, you need to set up a... You don't need to, but it's ideal to set up a uh, left rapid shot, right rapid shot, left regular shot, right regular shot button. Um, but you can also totally play this game just with one like, like two shot buttons left and right and just alternate between tapping and holding the reason i think that it's such a great beginner friendly game is because it's it's very forgiving in its design and it's also got wonderful visuals and, and music and it's really easy to get excited about so uh i'm starting here on stage one at max rank so you can choose the the rank or level of all the stages that you play through in this game. And uh, I choose to max it out at the start. Now you can you can play this game actually with level one for the entire game. It's something that you can do if you're new to the game or if you're just trying to learn it. Uh, but if you do so, you're gonna miss out on some extends. And that's why I, I actually play, uh, I think two stages at level three, two at level two and two at level one. And I've organized them in such a way that it, uh, it maximizes my ability to get those extends. So my goal with this stage here is, I mean, it's, it's a pretty straightforward stage even on max difficulty. My, my goal is just to leave the stage with that 1,000 counter in the bottom left-hand corner. That's your, uh, your hyper gauge. And so I want that maxed out so that I can hyper at the beginning of the next stage. Now, if I was playing this game in arcades, I would actually, I wouldn't be able to play, I don't think I, I can play, like, level 1 for every stage. It, it only lets you do two level 1s and two level 2s and as many level 3s as you want, or something like that. But, um, so that's another reason that I like to play this way, is kind of replicates the arcade experience in a way. So I'm right in the position I want to be, and I'm going to head straight to the Volcano at level 3. So I'm, I'm right off the bat, I'm doing those two hardest levels first. And one is so that I can get the extent early, and the other is so that I can you know, basically get the tough stuff out of the way. So if I, uh, if I mess up, uh, I don't have to restart from, from a really like far back place. So yeah, right off the bat... I'm, I pop my hyper, and I start destroying as many of those rocks as I can. This is the key to, uh, to getting the first extent. So when you enter hyper mode, your, your damage is increased, and you also generate a ton of these skulls and crowns uh, when you destroy enemies. And eventually, when you've generated enough of them, instead of skulls, you start generating... Like, tons of crowns. Crowns are worth a lot more than skulls uh, when you destroy enemies. So I'm, I'm in that state now, and I'm just generating as much as I can by destroying all these enemies and destroying all these rocks. And there, I just got the extent, which is great. It's worth noting that Death, Death Smiles is a little bit different from other shmups in that... Uh, touching the environment, like touching those rock walls, will actually not hurt you. They'll just collide with them. Uh, touching enemies will hurt you. Touching bullets, of course, will hurt you. But when you're in hyper mode, touching enemies won't hurt you. And if you touch an enemy, you'll get hurt, but you'll only lose half of a little life bar. So if you get if you touch an enemy twice, yeah, you're gonna lose a whole life. But if you only touch an enemy or some kind of you know some specific projectiles once you're kind of in the clear which is really forgiving it's, it's kind of nice um you can just kind of keep playing go oh, you know what oh well that's not a big deal 
and you can even earn that back in some cases. We got the dragon boss here. Rosa, uh, the character that I play as, is really, really strong, and if you, you know, point blank with her, it can do a lot of damage. Uh, I'm setting my option up above me for this section, and that's just because I want to focus on shooting, not on dodging those boulders. And those boulders can be pretty annoying, so I'm trying to use my option to take those out as much as I can. I'm getting right up close, trying to deal as much damage as possible. You can you can skip a lot of things with this boss if you uh, deal enough damage. You can skip this whole section, actually. Now, you can shoot left and you can shoot right. If you actually hold both the shoot left and shoot right buttons, uh, when you don't have a hyper uh, active, you can enter this kind of target target tracking mode. I forget what it's actually called. But uh, it'll kind of auto-target something nearby and shoot at it. So that's what I'm doing here. I barely have to do it, though, when the boss dies. It's only useful in a couple of specific circumstances, at least for a survival clear, one of them being the final boss, and uh, I'll show that off later. So here for the Forest of the Lost, I am going back to level 1. Now, as you mentioned, this is uh, not a particularly difficult game in that it only took me a handful of tries. Yeah, I think I played it over like a couple of weekends. I was at a cottage retreat, and it was just kind of addicting. Yeah, you know, it, it, even after the clear, I just couldn't help but keep playing it because the scoring is really interesting, um, and it was just just fun to to go through. So. There's an example of me getting hit by an enemy and only taking half my health. So it doesn't really, to me, it almost like doesn't count as a as a as a miss. Um, but yeah, I think this game is really really fun and it's got a really unique visual design. I I'm not really into the like little anime girl thing. That's shit. That's not to my taste. But you, what you're shooting is really interesting. I mean, these giant vines, all sorts of, like, creepy monsters and the kind of Halloween theme to the whole game. It's got this interesting view of the very Western uh, monsters and, and monster traditions, but through this kind of Japanese lens. You see that a lot nowadays as Halloween gets more popular in Japan. So it's got a very different flair to it. Uh, that opening stage that I played takes place in a very European town. There's just, I don't know, there's a kind of almost Disney, Tokyo Disney Halloween vibe to the game, which I think is really neat. Uh, I guess I'm thinking about something here. All right, I'm heading to the Swamp Waste, which has a, if you're at level two, it's got a health pickup. that You can, you can destroy a car and get a health pickup. I should also mention that, you know, I've, I've got my hyperactive, so everything that I'm shooting is giving me a gold crown, but normally when you shoot enemies, they're going to drop either skulls or crowns, and skulls are worth a lot less money, uh, a lot less points, sorry, than, than crowns, and um, you can make it so every enemy drops crowns, it's just you have to, depends on what you shoot them with, so if you shoot them with your rapid shot, the enemy might drop one or the other, versus if you shoot them with your um, regular shot, your held shot, focus shot, I guess. 
there isn't it's kind of just something you have to feel um that the I think the general rule of thumb is if it's a soft-bodied enemy, uh, you want to use your rapid shot. If it's a hard-bodied enemy, you want to use your regular shot. But it's truly it's really just something you have to feel over time and kind of get used to and play around with. Um, option manipulation is really important in this game, uh, especially if you're playing on higher difficulties. If there's the life. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completely recovered. Um, especially if you are playing at higher difficulties, or if you uh, decide to do the canyon or the gorge, and then you end up in what's called death mode in, for the final stage, where enemies start spitting back suicide bullets that you can only block with your option. I'm going to... I, I believe I bomb on this boss. This is a cave game, remember, so if we're trying to get that that first grimy clear, you should be bombing all the time. There's no reason not to. Yep, here's the bomb. Did I take a hit here? Or? Okay, now I'm fine. That, that pattern with the, I think they're jars, going across the left and right side of the screen is pretty tricky. When in doubt, bomb. Or just clear out the area underneath here and slowly dodge through and try to clear out as many of those pots. But this is a cave game. You got plenty of bombs. Use them. going in here at level 2 as well. And you can see some of what I'm talking about here with those enemies. So here I'm, I'm actually hitting them with the wrong shot, I guess. I'm, they're generating skulls. If I hit them with the right shot, they will drop crowns. So here, a focus shot makes those guys drop crowns. For these ones, you want to use the rapid focus again for those hard enemies. So yeah, it's kind of a neat thing that kind of encourages you to use your different shot types for all sorts of in all sorts of scenarios, not just for you know, slower movement or higher damage. It's, it's actually for scoring purposes. I should mention this route was actually kind of recommended on a, a pretty good Steam guide for the game. Um, but by no means do you have to use this route. I do recommend, though, that you, you really do learn that first two stage uh, extend get like if you can get the extends right out the out the gate you're in good shape this is a bit of a tricky pattern here because it moves kind of fast but when when the cow here has those cubes surrounding it you kind of want to kite them into the corner it becomes easier to dodge also I don't know why there's a cow in this game there just is I guess that's spooky. And the graveyard here at, at uh, level one. So I've done two of every level, two of every rank. So I'm not going to be entering death mode. I'm also not going to go into the gorge. Maybe, maybe I'll do that next. I don't know. A lot of shmups to play. Now, if you time it right, and I don't think I do here, you can get a ton of crowns out of a house coming up here. So I, I think I was a little too late on popping off my hyper. 
but if you do it correctly, there's a house that, that shows up later in this level, and you can use that to get a ton of points. This house here. Oh, I do, I do. I time it just barely right to turn them into crowns. And the, the visual indicator for that scoring trick is that you want to pop off the hyper, I think, after the third gravestone with the ghost coming out of it at the beginning of the level. Um, I did it a little bit late, but I mean, that there's there's some flexibility with it. This boss uh, on level one is a total pushover. Even Honestly, even on later difficulties, on higher difficulties, it's a pretty easy boss. You want to clear out as many of those stones as you can as he throws them and then it's just a lot of little tap dodging you want to stay fairly low there you go so now I'm going to enter the castle which is the final stage definitely a the castle is a huge difficulty spike in terms of the rest of the game the rest of the game is, is relatively straightforward. The castle is a big spike in difficulty, and it's kind of going to be the, the pain point for people trying to get the clear, and that's why I really encourage you to learn how to get that extend, just to have as many resources as possible going into this stage, and of course the final boss. This is kind of the first stage where I felt like, okay, I really need to kind of figure out my routing properly here. There are some situations that you just kind of want to anticipate and have a, a real answer to. So right off the bat, you want to kill those ghosts just as quickly as possible using your focus shot. There's going to be two of them. These Grim Reaper guys. Those dragons really need to be focus shotted and just taken care of with some tap dodging. The game's got a the game's level design has a really nice flow to it, which I think is part of the reason I enjoy it so much. There isn't a level in this game that I don't like. They're all fun, they're all unique. So you're really trying to play pretty aggressive here and take out threats as soon as they appear. You really don't want to be reacting to stuff. And here's a bunch of dragons that are really important to take out by going lower. Lower, lower, then up, and down, then down. Otherwise that can get to be a pretty overwhelming segment here. This just, you know, you want to tap dodge slowly back, and not moving too fast because you don't want any of those falling blocks to hit you, but Betsy there, or whatever her name is, is really, uh, really quick to kill. And I think I'm actually saving my super here just because it, you know, I'm going to be doing more damage with it. Those guys, yeah, take them out quick. You really kind of want to, anytime one of those uh, bridges shows up, just immediately take out one of those ogres. Another physical hit.
And I will say the, the bullet patterns in, the, in this game are really nice in terms of it being a horizontal game. There we go, now I pop off that. Um, you know, there are some games where the bullet patterns I find don't seem well designed for a horizontal space per se, or they're kind of hard to read. And this one, I, and I, I feel like they're, they're really well done, they're very clear, and they feel quite natural. And, uh, I, you know, I think for casual players, people are more used to a, a landscape game, right? I mean, maybe mobile players are used to portrait-style video games, but I feel like having a horizontal shmup being a beginner shmup is a, is a good idea. It's a little more natural, I think, for people. Oh, this is a great, a great segment for the uh, final boss. It's important to note that what I'm trying to do here, because I, I popped off my super before, is I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I leave this with a super. That's really important that I have one going into the boss. Because on the final boss, if you don't bomb, you'll actually get another hidden extent. If you do bomb, you aren't going to get it. So... Instead of bombing, you can use your super, which will, you know, briefly destroy all the bullets on screen uh, to kind of make it out of a, a hairy situation. Now, here at this last segment, it's important that you use your option to take up stuff at the top of the screen that's just spawning out like that. And here we are for the best named final boss in any video game, Jitterbug. Again, a lot of focus shot uh, micro dodging here. You are trying to macro some of the denser patterns, but you are just kind of looking for those opportunities to sneak through. I ended up popping off early, and the reason for that is because of the increased damage. If you can deal more damage early, you can get through these patterns a lot easier. But I took a hit. Which honestly isn't a big deal because I'm gonna get an extent. But then I took two. I would say even if this happens, you know, don't bomb because you can just get that extend right back. So here I got I kinda have to do some pretty sus dodging. I'm just not where I need to be, so I try to claw crawl over to the other side and I managed to get there but I take another hit but that's the beauty of this and you know this isn't a a, a no miss 1cc that's part of the reason I think this is such a great beginner shmup there we go actually I got two extents back so I'm already in just fantastic position here really good shape for this the true you know I don't know, I, I shouldn't call this a TLB, but the actual final boss being uh, Tyranno Satan. Not as good a name as Jitterbug, not as fearsome. Uh, so these are some really fun patterns to dodge. That one, yeah, you want to move, move to the back and then kind of push your way through it all the way to the right. This one, so to do this properly, you have to like shoot a couple of blocks and then not shoot, get on the other side of them. I just say screw that and bomb it because uh, it's weird and it's not easy. And this is a cave game, we're on the final boss. Instead of, you know, playing it, we'll just bomb. Kind of want to be 
really conscious of your movement here because you're pretty much always being tracked by that circle that summons those uh, bullets. Here I am, I'm using the targeting magic. So this is that time I'd mentioned. Uh, be careful, you're, you, when you use targeting magic, you are very, very slow. But it's really useful here because it'll, it'll keep uh, firing away at the boss. And you can focus just on dodging, but you really do need to pay attention to what's going on and, and can't so much, can't react to it so easily because of how slow you'll move. But it, it'll take care of that phase really cleanly. I remember the first couple times I played it, I was like, what do I do? I, I'm, I keep getting hit and I can't do damage to him. I was like, oh, I'm, yeah, I should be using targeting magic. And by the time you see this pattern, the boss is pretty much dead as long as you've got um, bombs. Uh, I think I, yeah, I dodge in the wrong direction here. That was not correct. I was not where I needed to be there, but hey, that's fine because I just got a bunch more bombs. So it's over. And that's Death Smells. So hopefully some of the routing and that kind of stuff is useful to you if you are trying to get your own one credit clear. Hopefully this was a little bit helpful. And if you're considering playing Death Smiles, considering picking it, you know, getting into shmups, it is a pretty good title and a pretty good gateway drug. Uh, you'll just have to get used to the controls. It's not as simple as some other shmups where it's just, oh, shoot and bomb. Um, yeah, all in all, I, I really enjoy this game, and it's it's quite forgiving, but it's still fun and engaging to play. The, the patterns are really exciting, they're really interesting, and it always feels like there's another goal you can set, because even though getting the 1cc may not be super, super challenging, it's still, it's still not a walk in the park, but, you know, compared to other cave games, it's certainly not the hardest by a, in, in any way. But there's always the, the next goal you can push to. Okay, I want to try to get a no miss, or I want to enter death mode, or I want to do the canyon, which is an optional miss, it, uh, an optional stage you can do, or I want to do it all on max rank. You can kind of keep pushing and pushing, and there's, the game's got more to give, which I really enjoy. And that way, it kind of reminds me of a Darius game where you might be able to clear the easiest route, but then there's all these other routes you can try, and so much more you can keep playing around with. And that's not to mention, it's got other characters as well. So, and I, I you know, on the Switch port, it's got different revisions and make a black label and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I really recommend it. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about Death Smiles, I can try to answer them in the comments, but I'd also just like to know what you think the best beginner shmup is. Cause I feel like everyone has a different answer on this. Um, and it's kind of hard once you've started playing shmups for... Once you've been playing for a while, it's kind of hard to, to go back and remember what it was like to be a beginner. But, uh, yeah, if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, all that typical YouTube nonsense. And uh, see you on the next one.